you know what you use cottonwood trees there's a giant cottonwood cottonwood is we could talk about cottonwood for a long time I bet but cottonwood was used for making packing boxes for uh, fruit and in the old days when they still used wooden packing boxes because it had very little flavor it didn't flavor the wood the, so it would be a good spoon wood because it has a neutral or non-flavored wood and it's easy to carve because it's really soft. But if it's too soft, maybe it's too weak to make a good spoon and it snaps when you're stirring a, a thick stew. Yeah, okay, so my, I don't know the best spoon wood. I'm just throwing out an idea that cottonwood has less, has less flavor. But it's such a weak wood that that's why there's so many big ones around because it hasn't been a valuable timber wood. One of its saving graces, there's more big cottonwoods around than most any other big species. Uh, because it has low timber value. If it was good timber, they'd be all, it'd be all day, and they almost all gone. But here's a fact about, interesting fact about big cottonwoods I just learned some time back, is that, you know, cottonwoods can get really big. And in big storms, or after they get old, sometimes the top will break out, and it'll start rotting from the top, and there'll be this big cavity that goes down to the tree. And that was the main denning site for female black bears at least in the old days, was the female black bears would climb up that tree and down into that hole, that cavity, and so they they would spend the all winter up there in the up there in the top of these giant cottonwoods, swaying gently back and forth. You know, it's like you know, you know babies rock themselves, you rock babies to sleep. Maybe they rock the bears to sleep. And I remember this researcher was researching this kind of stuff. He was way up there repelling, you know, he was up rock you know, rope climbing way up into this big and he's like looking for bats and, and swifts and things that live in those crevices and in those cavities there. And so he's tearing apart some bark and he looks in and there's this black bear face, looks out at him and he goes down really fast, <laughs> repelling down the tree. Because you know, he found a black bear sleeping in the tree and it woke the bear up. Um, so black bears really like big cottonwoods. And so we need to have them in the landscape for those, I guess the males you know, maybe they're lazy and the climate's good or something. But they, the, I think the males tend to do sleep on the dens on the ground. But, uh, but wh when I do, when every winter when I go by stands in big cottonwood, I look at those stand, cottonwood stands and wherever I live I notice where all those stands are and I drive by and I look up there and I'm looking for fresh brake marks where big limbs or the top of the cottonwood is broken out. And I can scan, in a day I'll scan sometimes thousands of cottonwood trees, hundreds and thousands, driving that by at 55 miles an hour. I'm assessing the stand because a, a new break has bright, shiny wood. It really stands out. And you can see them from a long ways away. So I can, I can look way into a grove, and if I see a broken off, fresh color, I can tell if it was last year or this year. So, wow, there's a fresh break, big tree that's the that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to find that top on the on the ground, and I'm going to pick all the cottonwood buds off because the cottonwood buds are really good medicine. So that's how I make money on cottonwood trees. And going what after huh? all what, from after the leaves fall until the buds expand next spring. So you've got basically you know November, December, January, February into March. So part of November, part of March are kind of like <laughs> but like four months. Um, and then I picked all the buds off and I sell them for, you know, I, get, I think I'm up to 20 bucks a pound fresh and 30 some bucks a pound dry. I didn't say it, so I use the buds to make an oil as a massage oil because it helps pain muscular. And you make a tincture and it opens the lung up, the aromatic oils in it. Lung passageway so the tincture. Because when you take that tincture, this is how those aromatic tinctures take the tinctures into your body and your body dies, you know, sucks it up and spreads it around the body and then it comes out your lungs and when you exhale, you're exhaling some of those aromatic oils uh, right out the lungs. 
If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about wildcrafting, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.